All right. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Brenda and I am the Director of Programming at Sea Kids Dream. I wanted to let you know a little bit about who we are and what we're doing today. Sea Kids Dream provides service learning programs to schools so their students can gain important leadership skills while making our world a better place. Some, student, some of the student leaders at the schools who participate in our service learning programs couldn't complete their in-person interviews with local nonprofit organizations before schools closed. So we are hosting these organizations here so students can do virtual interviews. These interviews are important so students can get their questions answered and take what they learn to decide the best way to help the issues that are important to them. Today, we're happy to be hosting Angela from the Nature Conservancy. Thank you, Angela, for joining us. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and um, see if students have some questions. And I also have some questions that students submitted to me um, ahead of time. Um, so. Let me get on here so I can see. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some of the questions that some students had sent to me. Um, the first question that I have is, um, when and how did your organization begin? Our organization was founded about 60 years ago, actually here in a small conference room in Ohio. We are a global organization now. Um, in 72 different countries, but a group of local ecologists got together at the Ohio State University and decided that uh, conservation was really a big field that we needed to see some movement in. And so they got together and about 60 years ago, our organization was formed. Oh, well, that's really cool. I didn't realize that it started here in, uh, in Columbus. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, it's the local roots. It's actually really yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that is, that is. Um, so um, another follow-up question that the student had is, um, how did your organization get its name? Um, well, actually, there was a couple of, I'm not 100% sure, but um, I think the Nature Conservancy, it just speaks for itself. We're a conservation organization really focused on nature. I would, you know, I'm going to follow up on that one. That's a really <laughs> good uh, question. I'm not sure exactly how we came to having just those three in our, in our name. Um, terrific. Let's see. I'm, I'm anxious to hear about that. And I'm sure the students are too. Um, let's see, you answered that one. Um, so um, a student, a question a student submitted to me is what is the main focus of your organization? The main focus of our organization is really highlighted in our mission. And our mission statement is to conserve the lands and waters in which all life depends. So we really focus a lot of our efforts at the state, the national and the global level on conserving and protecting those lands and waters in which all life depends, not just people or wildlife or plants, everyone depends on it. So we're really focusing on that. So uh, Richwood submitted a question to me and they want to know, what are some of the specific things you do to help endangered species? Ah, that's one of my favorite questions. I love it when people ask about our endangered species work. We help, the main way that we help endangered species here in Ohio is by protecting the habitat that they need to live. The places that they need that provides the food and the shelter specific to that animal. For example, one of the um, endangered species that we help is a Carner blue butterfly. It's a tiny butterfly about the size of your thumbnail. And we help protect that by providing critical habitat that has a certain plant that that butterfly needs. So we protect that up in Northwest Ohio. Another endangered species that we help to protect by protecting the land. So we own the land and make sure that it's not developed and it stays in a good condition for these animals is down in Southern Ohio, we protect spaces for the Allegheny wood rat which is a really big, um, it kind of looks like a velvety cliff mouse, if I could use that term. Um, it's a really large rat that um, is really charismatic and nice. So what we do is we protect the places that they need to live. Um, so Richwood also wants to know, how has the COVID lockdown helped in any way? Well, I think that one of the ways that the lockdown has helped is by um, helping people reconnect with some of their natural areas that are around them. While we're all uh, sheltering in place, um, most of us have found um, enjoying nature around us. So maybe we've been more aware of the bees, the butterflies, the birds that are coming to our own backyards. So I would have to say that it's helped people be more aware of the nature around them. 
Um, another question that I have um, is how many volunteers do you usually have with your organization? Well, we have a statewide volunteer program. So anywhere in Ohio, um, you can join our volunteer program and come and help us out. Right now I have 1,291 volunteers that receive my emails. And we have about 300 of them who get out of each year to help us. And that could be from helping at an event where maybe we're putting on a demonstration or helping lead a guided hike if someone's coming out for a field trip. Very nice. Um, Richmond had another question is, what is the most endangered animal and plant you have helped? Ah, the most endangered. Well, that's a, that's a relative question, most endangered, right? Um, I would have to say one of the ones that we've really uh, doubled down efforts for is going to be that Allegheny wood rat. Um, we've been part of some scientific studies with some researchers down there. Um, trying to get more information as to where they're at, how they move. So we've really doubled down efforts with that and helping to um, research them with our conservation partners. And they also want to know um, about the plants. Is there the a plant? plant? Yeah. Well, um, I do know of one plant species that we helped protect up in our wetlands, up in the northern region, um, different trilliums and orchid species. Um, that's all I know. I'm not sure about the scientific names, but we do help uh, different trilliums and orchid species throughout the state. Um, Ridgewood also wants to know, um, how do you figure out when an animal goes onto the endangered list? Well, that is actually related to the policy and research at the government level. So at the federal government level and the state government level, um, how they determine something is either state listed as endangered or federally listed as endangered is based on the policies and the research. So it could be from there not being um, a lot of individuals left, so a low number of that species. It could be that their habitat is being destroyed or degraded to where it's no longer suitable for them to be in. Um, there can be a lot of different factors. Um, it could also be from climate change, maybe that they're concerned with, um, maybe there might not be resources for them to move to a different space. So there's different criteria, and that's based on the research from the local scientists. So the people who know those animals or plants best, um, they will submit reports. And sometimes um, that will rise to the level of the federal government, but most of the time it goes to the state level. And then that research is compiled through like the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, and they make a determination. And so it really is a lot of different factors into what makes something endangered or threatened, but it really has to do with those kind of things that I explained with numbers and habitat. Terrific. Um, um, let's see. Um, another question that we have from a student is, what are you guys doing to help? Well, we've kind of already answered this, but help the environment. <laughs> Yeah, so we do a lot of different things from protecting just the spaces to make sure that they don't get developed to helping restore areas. So that could be um, taking an area maybe around a stream or a creek that might not have been as healthy and putting it to more of a natural state that would have a floodplain and maybe some um, better plants to soak up that water. Um, so that's restoration work. And so we can create habitat by doing that. And as well as we manage habitat. So we want to make sure that there's no threats coming in like pollution or invasive species. Sometimes there's plants that can outcompete the food that our animals need. So we help manage that land to make sure that it stays healthy through time. Um, Richard wants to know, it says on your website, it says you plant trees. Do you travel to other states to do that as well? Well, globally, we have a program to plant a billion trees. So actually, each of our states focus just locally on what we can do um, in our lands that we own, as well as at partner lands. So I haven't participated on any um, tree plantings in other states, but they are happening all over the world. Um, and then um, I know you kind of answered this earlier, but um, do you work with um, other countries? One of the schools, uh, Ridgewood, want to know. 
Yeah, there's lots of different countries that we work with. There's over 73 different countries that our organization is part of. Um, and one of the areas that we have a really close link with is Brazil because of the migrating birds. Um, Richwood wants to also, what can they do to help you? Well, what you can do to help is very small steps, but make a really big impact. And that can be through your choices at home. Maybe it's uh, using less water when you're brushing your teeth um, to making sure that you recycle, um, to picking up trash along your local waterways, um, and also participating in tree plantings, just like the question before. So um, planting a tree, um, also documenting the different animals and plants that you see in your own backyard can help us so we know where things are. So that's a, a, just a few ways that you can actually help. Um, a follow-up question from a school um, with that is, so if we would donate money um, to you, what would you do with the donations? Well, our organization does a lot of different things um, from engaging programs, such as what I do with the volunteer work. Um, it can go to protecting different lands, um, helping to conserve the land and water that we need across Ohio. It could go specifically um, to a project that can help um, in a specific area. So there's a lot of different things that we can use it for. Um, but one, the, the main way that we would end up using it is, is probably through our protection work for making sure that the areas that the plants and animals and people like us need to have in nature is there. Um, another question um, that I had from a student is, um, what got you interested in working uh, for this organization? Well, I actually started off as a volunteer with the Nature Conservancy in my home state of Illinois. I was out there collecting seeds in one of their restored prairies, and I fell in love with the sights and the sounds, and I really wanted to do something to get involved. And so I kept volunteering, and I ended up finding a research program um, through my school that I got involved with um, at a Nature Conservancy-owned place. And uh, from there, after I completed my research, I really love the organization and how they really focus on connecting people to their natural spaces. And so I found this wonderful position with Ohio just about three years ago, and I've been thrilled ever since. Uh, so kind of from volunteer to volunteer coordinator, full circle. Um, I have a student follow-up question on the volunteering. Um, do you have a certain age requirement and stuff for volunteering? Or how does your volunteering work if they're interested in volunteering? Yeah, so we do require anyone who is under the age of 18 to come out and volunteer with a parent or guardian. That's just sometimes because we have to work with tools and we want to make sure that everyone's safe while they're out there. And it's a great way for you to have fun with your whole family. So if you are interested in joining and signing up to volunteer, um, you can go to our website, nature.org at forward slash Ohio, and there's instructions on how to get involved there. Um, another question that I have from, a um, from Ridgewood is, um, what goes into cleaning up your, your conservato conservatories? Is it hard to do? Um, there's not much, it, it, it's really site specific. So why are we there and, and what do we need to do? So usually management plans are worked up by the staff who is in charge of that area. So our land manager, excuse me, our land managers is what we call them. And they go in there and, and they assess what needs to be done. It can be simple stuff from trash cleanup to stuff that's more complicated like repairing a trail or removing invasive species. So those plans are set by the land managers and then they're revised um, every few years to see if there's any changes. So um, there's small work and there's big work. All of it goes into it. Um, let's see if I have any other student questions that haven't been asked from my list. Um, so what are some of the things that you, one of the students want to know, what are some of the things that you do with your job? So one of the things that I get to do, which is the best thing that I get to do, is I get to get outside and get in the field with everyone and get to enjoy nature. So as the volunteer coordinator, I get to organize all the fun events from planting trees and collecting seeds to guided hikes or kayaking. 
Um, we have lots of different ways uh, to get involved and I get to lead all those events. So I also go into the schools and do interviews like this. I work with a, a few different partners around this, uh, conservation partners around the area to put on um, little programming. Um, I was part of a bio blitz, which is where you go out and identify all the plants and animals you see. So I'd have to say that's my favorite thing that I get to do. Um, the other parts of my job that I do deals with a lot of mapping and a lot of uh, planning and office stuff. <laughs> yes, but I love getting outside and that's my favorite part where I get to lead all of you on a nice guided hike or <laughs> an explore event. So what is um, something that you think it's really important for students to realize um, or know about your organization um, that they haven't already asked? <laughs> One thing that I would say is really important is that your actions do matter, that the little actions you can take in your own backyard do roll up and can make an impact on a big national or global scale. So the little actions that you take now um, definitely can be seen through all of us taking those actions at that bigger level. So what I'd say is although we have those local roots and we help you get connected with your own backyard, just remember that we're a global organization making really big changes at a really big scale. Terrific, terrific. I don't seem to have any more student questions coming in right now. So we want to thank you for spending time with us today. And sorry, we had to reschedule from last week, but glad you could still participate with us today. <laughs> I was thrilled to connect with all of you today virtually. And thank you so much for all of your support and all of your interest and all the great questions today. And I'll make sure to get back to you about really what's in our name. How was yeah. it, how did it come about? So I'll uh, make sure to follow up on that. And thank you everyone for your time. Well, if anybody wants to learn more about the Nature Conservancy, you can go to the seekidsdream.org website and we have a service hub and they're on our service hub. So we have a nice uh, page about the Conservancy and then you can uh, link to their website from there to learn more about what they do. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you, everyone. Have a great time.